welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and today I've got a couple of things that I want to share with you. First is the Jin Hao Heritage 9056, a wooden fountain pen and it's a large fountain pen with a good number six fine nib on it. And uh, I have it in both this redwood type stain and in a walnut stain. And so I'm going to share both of those with you and see how that pen writes and, and how well it's made and things like that. And I have in one of those pens this new ink from Birmingham Pen Company. This is Kentucky Bluegrass. It's part of their new, it's called the Crisp line of inks, and it's supposed to fight things like feathering and bleed through and things like that. So we're gonna take a look at both this ink and the Jin Hao 9056 in a couple of different really nice wood finishes. Let's flip that camera and dive right in. Okay, so when your pen arrives, it may arrive in retail packaging. My first one did not. It just showed up in the typical Jin Hao sleeve. I believe that that one was from Amazon and this was from AliExpress. And I was really happy that it showed up in a box because I bought the Redwood finished pen first and I saw somebody else post about having that pen and they had this nice case and every, or box and everything. And uh, I thought, man, I hope I didn't pay as much and get as and get less. Uh, you know how that goes. But uh, I, when I ordered the second finish, after I had tried this pen, had it for a little while, I thought, I want that other pen too in the other wood finish. And I wanted it for this review to be able to, to show you what the two finishes are like. There are some others, but these were the two that I liked the best uh, in the photos when I ordered them. Anyway, you open up this box and you get... And this makes it for nice for a gift, by the way. Uh, a little card with instructions on how to fill the pen. And uh, also, it, they do sell it in a ballpoint. So there are instructions for refills on ballpoints and things like that. So uh, that's kind of nice and unusual, again, for a, a Jin Hao pen, at least the ones that get sent over to the U.S. It may be different uh, where you are. This pen, I think, is presented nicely in a very simple cardboard box. If you pull the tab, it's just a false bottom. Uh, but but very, very nice packaging, I thought, and certainly the best I've ever gotten in a, in a Jin Hao. So this is uh, the darker, kind of a walnut-like stain. And, of course, I don't know exactly which wood. Maybe those of you who know wood best could tell me. I'm going to show you the grain. If you know what kind of wood they're using... You can put that in the comments. I know there are probably some people out there who are into woodworking and carpentry and can spot that in a New York minute. So uh, this is the pen. Very simple, large cigar shape. Let me just, just to give you an idea, let's see here. It is 17.2, no, 0.3 millimeters or point, we're going to round it up to 0.7 inches. So pretty good sized pen. That's at the cap, at the largest part of the cap. I'll give the rest of the dimensions here in just a second. But really nicely done, well stained, sanded, and all that good stuff with a nice, as you can see, a nice satin finish. Really like the uh, work on this pen. It's a nice, well-made pen. And uh, so is, let me just go ahead and show you this one too, so is the one in the redwood stain. Really like that. And uh, just both of them. Nicely done. And so I like that. Uh, not crazy heavy. Uh, a well-balanced pen, I think, especially for its size. And of course, you know, wood helps with that a little bit. But really, really a nice pen. Uh, the clip, you will notice, has its spring a little bit further down than normal. It works very well. And this makes it accommodate a normal sized shirt pocket. I don't know if you can tell, but this pen is long enough. That would have been an issue if it were at the regular spot. And so it works very well. And you can carry this more often in a shirt pocket than would otherwise be the case had they not moved that down. So I appreciate that. The other uh, bit of design is here in the logo. And you'll notice it has the Jin Hao Chariot and Jin Hao Pen Heritage carved into the wood, and they have done a nice job of that on both of these pens, as you can see here. So I do like that too. I think that's I think that's nicely done. Now, when we open up the pen, it will take. Let's go ahead and count. So we have one. Oh, let me go back. 
That was faster than I remembered. We have one is right there. Not even one and a half. About one and a quarter turns is all it takes. So that makes it kind of a handy pen if you're having to take the cap on and off in a meeting or something like that as you're taking notes. Then it has a nice thick section that is polished plastic and it is uh, it has good grip. It looks like it might be slick, but it, it's not. It's not slippery at all. Now that may change under humid conditions, but under uh, it's kind of a little humid here today and not really an issue at all. And then you have uh, the metal threads and this nice trim here. Open it up. And of course, it's a gin house, so you're going to get a converter. And then, of course, this metal section there too. So all of that nicely done. And of course, it is an international standard converter. So you've got options as far as cartridges and ink and all of that kind of thing. Let's look at the nib. Now, Jinhao, I find, has uh, a, a good reputation. You know, you have those typical quality control issues, uh, but I, I find they have a, a good reputation and I've had very good experience with their number six nibs and these two-tone nibs that they've been putting out in some of their pens lately, which seem to me to be slightly different uh, in their markings, for example, that great big giant fine marking uh, is a newer thing. Uh, I have found these nibs to be a little bit more consistent and to be great writers. And uh, that's, that's my own personal experience. That's what I've noticed so far. Normal plastic feed, so nothing special there. Uh, but I find that the pen writes quite well. So uh, while we're talking about the pen writing quite well, why don't we get on to that? All right, so let me first highlight the ink that I'm going to use in this writing test. This is Birmingham Pen Company's new crisp ink, one of them, and this is the Kentucky Bluegrass, and I really uh, do like this ink so far. Now let me uh, show you the, the writing test that I've done here, and then I will uh, do a, a water fast test uh, before, we, before we write. So this was done first with a glass dip pen, and it was quite wet, uh, the glass dip pen was, and uh, so it wrote a very thick line. It's, a, it's kind of a broad-lined glass dip pen and uh, no feathering none of those issues there is some nice shading lots of saturation with that uh, dip pen but it wrote very wet so keep that in mind because i'm going to flip the paper here and show you uh, how it did it did still have some uh, bleed through pretty a lot with the glass dip pen. Uh, this is Rhodia paper, and so that will give you an idea. Uh, this is not as much as the past Birmingham uh, pen inks that I've shared with you, which I have more than I've shared, but the Electron, for example, uh, bled through quite a bit. Love that ink. It's beautiful, has great saturation, but it, it does go through a lot of papers. Uh, this did with the glass dip pen, but uh, right here, is the Jinhao 9056. That's this pen that we're looking at today. And you will notice that there, there's there's none. And down here where I wrote uh, my impressions, the only places that it happened were, uh, there were a couple of quotation marks I wrote fairly close together that bled through, and uh, where I went back over a letter and corrected uh, right here. You can see just a dot of bleed through. So uh, still a little bit of that, but overall it performs pretty well. This is the shading, and I hope that this comes across in the video. Uh, it may oversaturate a little bit on the video. Uh, this is actually in person a very nice, very natural green. Uh, it does have good shading. It's not oversaturated. You'll notice uh, there are lighter parts here in the swab and here where I tested the, the uh, wetness. And it's, so it's not a dark green. Uh, you may think so here where I did the dry times, but in, uh, in here where it's very wet. So you're gonna get a lot of variability on the saturation depending on what you're writing with. But with this fine Jin Hao, uh, it's very much like the swab. And it's just a very nice natural, I mean really close to grass. I mean, they really kind of nailed the grass thing. Uh, green, a natural green, and I like that about it. Because some greens, if you're trying to get a natural color, they're gonna be oversaturated and everything else. But this this matches when well, I'm looking out the window while I'm talking right now, and it matches the grass in my yard, which is not Kentucky bluegrass, but very similar 
shade. Uh, and there's no way I could blow. Uh, there's no way I could grow Kentucky bluegrass in my yard with a little bit of rain that we get. Uh, Anyway, so this is the swab. Nice shading. If, I would think if you're somebody who uses fountain pen ink from an art perspective, uh, this would be a neat green to have in your, uh, in your cabinet there because it has to offer some nice shading and it, it, it's a wonderful natural green. Dry times. Now, let me explain what I've got here because you're looking at this and seeing some differences. Um, this was the five second dry time and I wrote a lot of ink here. This is not light. Uh, it took me a lot to get uh, that wet, but I wanted it to, to be a really wet sample. Uh, so this was the five second. This is the 10 second, and you'll notice I did it twice. The reason for that is because when I got to the 20, it then went back to a long dry time. But as the paper will tell, uh, I, I over inked that compared to the others. And so I went back and did it again when I got that result. It redid the 10 second as well, just to check for consistency. Those were very similar in ink amount, and so were the results. Uh, when I did this closer to what I had done before, it was completely dry by 20 seconds, but this was uh, overwritten. And in fact, uh, you can even feel in the paper that I just kind of, I did that too much. <laughs> okay. So I would ignore this. I'm also a target shooter and we would call this a flyer. And that's usually human error as was the case in this test. So I would, I would go by these four because those are more typical of my experience with this ink. Let me go get a little bit of water and we will do the uh, wet test. Okay. Now I'm going to try not to just go crazy here. That ink has been dry for quite a while. So this is gonna give us, I think, a fairly good idea. Oop, there we go. There's a big splotch <laughs> of what that's like. And uh, as you can see, that's not bad. There's, uh, that's, there's ink coming off here in the middle. You can see that it has taken a good bit of the ink off of, of, them, of the middle. But what it didn't do, and let me even go sideways and up and down, it didn't smudge much. So that's actually not bad as uh, water fastness goes. I mean, you would still be able to read what was there even though it's taken, it's kind of interesting, it's taken a lot of the green here and uh, left behind just kind of a, a grayish green shading. But it would be, you would still recognize what was written and it, 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 it didn't smear. So. That's pretty good. This actually, I tell you what, of the inks, and I haven't, I haven't shared with you on the channel uh, most of my inks, but uh, not, not as many as I have intended to do. But that's the best result I've gotten so far of the, those of those that I have shared with you. That's a lot of a caveat there, but it, it needs to be there. Uh, so that's that's not bad, and uh, you know it came through. After I wetted that, uh, you, you could see just a couple of little dots before. This is all from the wetness and the wet, wet fastness test. So uh, that's an interesting, that's, that's really good. I, I need to add that to my, uh, my impressions. And what are my impressions? One, as I've shared with you, I think it's a very natural shade of green. And uh, of course, that's going to depend on what you want. I like that about this green. I think it's I think it's a cool shade of green. And then uh, the flow has been good. No issues there. Uh, no uh, feathering. I'm skipping one, but no feathering or anything like that on uh, the papers that I've used it on so far. Uh, there is shading to it. And like I said, from an art perspective, uh, the shading control you can have in layering that ink, as you can see in the swab, is pretty nice. And uh, there is, the, ne the one negative I have is that there's still some bleeding through on rhodia paper, which for me, that's kind of the test. If it bleeds through on rhodia paper with a pen like with that glass pen, uh, there was, let me show that to you just one more time, like this, uh, then that's, that's a thing, okay? And I know that's not a normal pen that I would write with all the time, but some of you may use those often. You want to know that, and if, uh, if that's, a concern for you, then, then that's there. It is better behaved if you have some of it, like the electron that bleeds through. And again, love that ink. I'm not saying this to disparage it, uh, just as a, uh, you need to know what you need to know, because that's one of my favorite inks. Uh, then, you know, 
be aware of that. There might, there might still be, just test it. It's kind of like cleaning your carpet or your fabric. Uh, test a spot before uh, you do anything too important that you can't undo. Other than that, very well behaved ink and uh, that's an impressive result on the, uh, the wetness test. So there you go, there you go, that's pretty good. Now let's get to that Jin Hao and see how it does in writing. Okay, as long as I've got the Rhodia pad out, this might as well be what I use for the test. So this is the Jin Hao 9056 Heritage Pen. It is a fine nib. And this is, if you don't know by now, I don't know how, maybe you skipped it, maybe you skipped it. Uh, if you did, this is the Kentucky Bluegrass. It's actually one word I'm trying to skip on that. Let's see here. So, the nib, I, I've kind of got the ink on my mind. We're, we're talking about the pen and the, the nib at this point. The nib is a, a steel nib, so uh, you're not gonna get flex or variation out of, out of this nib, okay? This is just a normal fine nib. And so, you know, you're gonna get that and it's just not any variation at all. That's okay, that's not what it's made for. Very comfortable pen to write with. Um, if you like a larger pen, uh, this is one. It's very, I will say it's not the same section. If you have a Jin Hao 159, it is uh, very similar. I don't think it's identical, but it's very similar to that in the, the size of the, the grip. So nice pen to hold, well balanced, unposted, and uh, let's see here. Yes, posting is completely a thing. You can do that. Very secure, no issue there. Uh, as far as feel, it just makes a very long, you see that? A very long pen, maybe a little bit back weighted. Uh, so I would I would write with it unposted. And if you're looking for a pen that's larger to write with unposted, this certainly is one. And, you know, that's pretty good that it didn't dry out while I was talking about that. Just by itself. That's a good thing. It's a nice writing pen. If you're familiar with Jin Hao's number six nibs, then you already know you often get a very good one. Now, that said, this would be a, a great pen if you're looking for a pen that you wanna swap that nib out with something nicer. Uh, this pen is worthy of a, of a lot of nice nibs. So that's, that's something to consider too. Being the, the number six nib, it gives you tons of options. And I like that thing, kind of thing. I, I like options. Don't you like options? So uh, in this pen, what are the things that I like and don't like? Let's do some pros and cons. I like to do that every now and then. And uh, we'll do that today. Pros and cons. What do I like? Uh, I, I like the uh, wood finish on both these pens. Um, I, well, I think it tells you something. If I like a pen well enough to buy two of them, that should tell you something because I do not do that unless I really like a pen. I, I don't have the need of two of the same pen, obviously. Need is, is not what we're really talking about at this point anymore, is it? Um, but I really do like both of these finishes. I, both, they're, I think they're both attractive finishes. Let me put that there so you can remember what that looks like. and. Uh, I like them both. As I said, I may like this one a little bit better, but I, I really think they're both good. So, you know, pick the one that you like. I like that nib. It is smooth, and for a, a fine nib, uh, that's always a nice thing because some fines are a little feedbacky and things like that. But this one's nice and smooth. It is a Chinese fine, but I will say I have had other Jin Hao fines uh, that were. Uh, really, they weren't just mediums. I, I've got a Jin Hao fine that I think is abroad. Uh, one of those early on, but my X750, uh, I think it really came as abroad. Uh, both of these nibs are very consistent compared to each other, and that's something. Both are smooth, they write really well, and both have a nice 
fine line and it's a crisp line, which is good since I'm using this ink to test whether or not it's actually as crisp as it says. And the fact that it is, is a function of ink and nib. So there is that. I think that it is a good value uh, for the price. You know, go out and price other wood pens of similar quality. And uh, this is a very good value. Now, I would say this. I don't know. And, uh, you know, I, I don't even know how I would find out to know where the wood is sourced from and how sustainable that is. That's important to a lot of us. Uh, there are pens that can document that. There are pen companies that show that. Uh, the uh, the Conklin All-American, a very similar pen, um, much more expensive, but I think reasonable for what you're getting, is uh, sustainably sourced, and that's important. And so, you know, bear those things in mind. I just, I can't tell you. It could be, but I don't know. Uh, that's that's something. So that's, you know, I'm going to put that down as a con. And I know that not everybody even bothers to tell you uh, about those things, but uh, the source is unknown for the wood. The source of the wood is unknown. And uh, for some people, that's going to be a con, not necessarily a total negative. But uh, if that's something you want to know, well, I, I can't tell you. Uh, for some people, uh, it's going to be a bit large for some. Now, I find it very comfortable, and some of you are going to find uh, the size of this pen to be its greatest asset. Uh, others will say, I love the wood, but wow, no. Uh, you can carry it in the pocket, as I said, but it's going to be in a shirt pocket, but it's going to be large. Uh, so depending on yourself, and uh, you know, that's that's a personal thing. You might go, no way, I'm, that's like carrying a hammer in my pocket. Why would I do that? So there you go. There is that. Other than that, I really... I uh, just think it's a, it's a great pen, very well made. Uh, the The quality is there, okay? The quality is just there, and the wood is nicely done, and it's well balanced. And I really think that if you're somebody who likes wooden pens and you're looking for maybe a gift for somebody, it is graduation season. You will want to order that on Amazon because you're not going to get it from China in time. Uh, then this is a great gift pen if you're looking for something uh, in this price range. All right, that's my review of the Birmingham pen, uh, Kentucky Bluegrass. Love the ink and these pens, and I think it's a nice pairing. You got that natural green and the wood, and it's spring, and who doesn't, who doesn't love spring? All right, God bless you, and have a great week.